Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping back into a subreddit we haven't had for a while, stories about Kevin. Before we start, today's would you rather question. Would you rather have x-ray vision of all people out there attractive or not, or have everyone else have x-ray vision of you? Let me know in the comment section down below. This first story comes to us from Cyclone Nerf. Kevin fractured his spine because he didn't listen to the instructions four times. Let's jump right in. This happened last year. Myself and my colleague were running our monthly parkour workshop. I'm going to say this before all the parents who think they know better than me about parkour, but have never done it once in their lives say anything. Parkour, contrary to popular Karen-like opinion, is not very dangerous. Like with all sports, it has its risks. And like with all sports, it has coaches, me, to train properly to avoid and lower the risk of injury. But just like in American football, for example, broken bones and concussions still happen. I myself have been doing parkour for six years, and I've never broken anything. I've fallen, winded myself, and had some scrapes and hard bangs against the floor. But I've also played rugby for seven years and received way more injuries from that than I did parkour. But back to the story. During this workshop, parents were there watching, as this is only one hour long. So they stay to take their kids home afterwards. We had kids as young as six, I think, that day, to as old as 13 or 14. Kevin was an older kid who was about 14. He didn't look like a Kevin, and had done most of what we showed him to do on either his first or second go so far. His mom was not a Karen. She, ironically, was a doctor. So we had just gone over our landings and shoulder rolls and we're going to put them into practice. So what we did was gather them all together and I told them the next steps. In parkour, we roll to disperse the impact so it doesn't hurt our joints. Now, this wasn't exactly a high jump and I've had the little kids in previous workshops do it with no problem. The jump was about 170 centimeters high down onto grass. This is what's next, guys. You're gonna start down on one end of this block jump over to the other end, then jump down. Remember, landing feet first, bend your legs, hands out, and turn your head as you roll, and push forward to roll out. Explained it once. I then climb up and show them while saying the steps as I do it. Explained it twice. We then split them up into groups. The other coach takes Kevin in his group, and I have mine. But while I'm coaching, I can see the other coach quickly explain the instructions again on his block and I see him demonstrate it again quickly, but just the end part, explained it two more times. Kevin had now heard the instructions four times. So far, everyone is landing it perfectly. They're all jumping down to their feet and landing it. Then it's Kevin's go. I didn't see him do it. I just turned around to see him halfway getting up and cough as the people in that group and some of the parents went, whoa. I asked the other coach what happened. He said instead of jumping down to his feet, he decided to dive roll from the top to the ground. For context, someone like me could do that and be fine, might hurt somewhat, but I know how to take an impact like that. I just wouldn't do that because that's an unnecessary move to do off the end, and it's a lot of impact. So for a beginner like Kevin, something like this would hurt a lot. Also, a dive roll is where you dive like you would into a pool, but you change your end into a roll. Look up perfect dive roll on YouTube to understand better. But he got up and walked away from it and finished the workshop. His mother wasn't angry and saw he wasn't paying attention to the instructions. But she later told my boss, who told the other coach and I, that he has a small fracture in his spine. He went to bed with a sore back and woke up in a lot of pain. Sucks to be him, to be honest. I think the public's perception of parkour is tainted by all the YouTube videos out there of people doing it from rooftop to rooftop in very unsafe looking situations where one single misstep means you're falling to your death. Myself personally though, whenever I hear just the word parkour, the only thing I can think about is The Office and watching them jump over the desks and whatever else they could find, yelling parkour every single time. Ah, <sighs> it's been tainted. Do me a quick favor and take a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're actually not subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. 
This next story comes to us from Privateer Redbeard, Twin Kevins. Let's jump right in. I taught high school for seven years. I only truly encountered Kevin twice, and they were a set of twins who insisted on taking every single class together. I taught foreign language to them, or rather, they sat in my class while I taught everyone else foreign language. The highlights. They would both routinely stare at the walls. Not like wandering off or daydreaming as we all do, but hyperfixation on the cinder block walls. The first time I asked why, their reasoning was that they didn't think we had class that day. I guess me lecturing and putting notes on the board wasn't a clue. They were both convinced that they were extremely smart but just didn't apply themselves, which honestly makes little sense to begin with. When I asked them if smart people would think it prudent to apply themselves enough to at least pass, they had no answer. Their combined grade in my class, and in most other classes they took, was not high enough to pass. They would routinely end quarters with 10% each. Very seldom did either of them ever turn in any work whatsoever. Homework, projects, even tests and quizzes. They'd just keep them, completely blank, and refuse to turn them in. Then, a few weeks later, they would try to just claim they were absent on the day of the test or quiz and ask to do it after school. We kept an electronic record of absences, so their success rate on that ploy was zero for probably 30. Despite never doing a drop of work, they were both vehemently convinced that all their teachers were out to get them and failing them on purpose because school is easy, it's impossible to fail. They routinely cheated on virtually every assignment they tried to do, but they cheated so poorly it was comical. I frequently caught them with poorly hidden cheat sheets for things like vocab quizzes where the words written were from the wrong chapter. Every now and then, one of their hands would go up in the middle of my lecture. Their question was always, what are we doing? They quite literally meant, what event is currently taking place in this room? They never had the slightest clue if I was lecturing, we were taking a test, or if we were somehow in the midst of a fire drill. Just zero knowledge of the events going on around them. When they started driving, a terrifying thought, they would routinely leave school as they pleased. When questioned about it, their response was typically that they had just thought school ended early that day, despite no one else leaving the building. For a solid semester, they both became unnervingly obsessed with Reddit, to the point where after anything occurred, one or both of them would say r slash insert noun as though it was the funniest thing known to man. For example, if I said the word homework, one of them would chime in with r slash homework which absolutely no one found entertaining in the least. Their English class took them to see a stage play adaptation of The Birds, the Hitchcock horror movie. For probably two months after seeing that play, they would both constantly mutter, The birds, 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 under their breath for seemingly every minute of their waking existence. Then, one day, that, thankfully, just stopped. The most soul-rending interaction I had with them was at one of our frequent meetings between me, usually a few other teachers they had, the administration team for the school, principal and two VPs, and both their parents. They were seniors, were short on credits to graduate by an alarming amount, and had the intellectual capacity of young children. I asked the two Kevins point blank, what skill do you believe you have or at least have the ability to attain that someone in the future is going to pay you for. Absolutely blank stares from both of them. The silence dragged on. Minutes went by while all 10 of us in the conference room just waited. Their parents just sort of looked dejected. Finally, maybe three or four agonizing minutes into the dead silence, one of them said, video games. Last I heard, their parents made a large donation to the school, private Catholic school. They took summer classes to make up their missing credits. Both graduated and both were accepted to a very highly ranked engineering college in a neighboring state. I do not know what has become of them since. They would be seniors in college right now. I was absolutely told that back when I was in high school that I was smart but I didn't just apply myself 
it wasn't something I was telling people, it's what I was being told about myself. To be honest, when I was in school, I had random bursts of motivation so I could do the work when I wanted to, but most of the time, I just didn't want to do it. Something that makes me wonder here though is the parents that made a major donation to the school just to get their kids to pass. I guess these parents don't realize that no amount of money they throw at schooling is going to make these kids functional members of society. This next story comes to us from Crap Poster 9000, a town full of Kevins. Let's jump right in. I grew up in a crappy middle of nowhere town in the Midwest USA. I could write a small book on the stupid of the town, but here are some of the highlights. The local diner that all the locals thought was awesome was always serving meals with meat still frozen in the middle, and almost everything was freezer burnt. The entire place stank of rotting food and pig crap, like farmers would walk in with crap literally slopping off their clothes, and that was normal. All bread products had that distinct aftertaste of mold. Thing is, a solid portion of the town's population truly believed that to be fine dining. The whole town hated outsiders, to the point of hurting their own businesses. What makes someone an outsider? Your family doesn't live within a few counties. If your grandparents weren't a 20 minute drive away, many would unironically think you are working to bring about the town's downfall or whatever dumb butt crap and will do petty garbage. Local realtors would try to sabotage outsiders if they think a local might want the house. When you eventually get sick of everyone's stupidity, those same realtors will try to force you to sell for insultingly low prices to one of their relatives. The local school system allowed the same bumpkin teachers to use literally the exact same material for the entirety of elementary, for who knows how embarrassingly long. Kids starting first grade will be given the exact same lessons as their fourth graders. They just go over the alphabet repeatedly, a solid half of their high school age kids were unable to read their textbooks and would struggle with math because those same teachers would just have them count on their fingers instead of actually teaching them. Some teachers also teach old wives tales as a fact, like toads causing warts. As far as more specific stories, one of the dumber local families moved in next door. I only knew one of the kids before this who was a really dumb pathological liar and a thief. Someone must have told him early in life that his nose shrinks when he lies because he would puff up his nostrils every time he would lie. I last saw him in his mid-teens and he was still doing it. However, the youngest was considerably dumber. He couldn't reliably dress himself. I don't mean like a five or six year old putting his shirt on inside out. I'm talking this dumb butt wouldn't put on underwear and wouldn't pull his pants up over his butt well past 10 years old. He always had the most annoying tone to his voice as if he was trying to imitate a baby and would sit his bare butt on the ground and cry for a minute every time someone told him off. The oldest of the three seems to have inherited all the brains and from what it seems he rightfully tries to spend as little time as possible with his siblings. They, for whatever reason, got multiple dogs. They kept one inside and one chained up in the back. I doubt either of them were taken care of. There was a layer of dog crab covering everything the dog in the back could reach within its short chain, and it would bark and cry literally 24-7. It seems they often let the dog they had inside crap inside the house. Whenever their door opened, you could smell it. When they did let it out to do its business, it would crap in our yard. They all left really weird garbage everywhere. I have found raw meat tossed into our yard from them, and there was often parts of random cars, lawnmowers, appliances, etc. randomly strewn about. Of course, the dogs they got were bully breeds. They are lucky the ones they got are actually pretty sweet and as dumb as they are instead of violent, because the one they kept indoors would always find a way out every few months and go for a run. Rewinding some years, we had another next door neighbor that was just as evil, like taking their lawnmowers 10 feet over the property line to destroy our rose bushes awful. This bat crap crazy lady had like 20 cats, a dog, and a son who would shoot our dogs with BB pew pews in the early morning. Their cats were completely feral, like hide under our cars to then attack us as we get in every morning. My folks had to start trapping and taking them to the county 
to take care of them because they were a hazard and a potential rabies risk. In the first few years of my brother and I being in daycare, one of the more well-off neighbors up the hill had a little psychopath kid that would wait for us to be let off the bus and then let out their violent dog. Honestly, it's lucky none of us got mauled to death by it. When they were eventually forced to put it down, that little bee kid of theirs would still wait for us, just sulking because she didn't have a beast to sick on us. At the daycare proper, there was a smaller kid who, looking back, probably had Pika. The other kids would tell him that the mud on the property was chocolate, and sometimes the kid would fall for it multiple times a day. He seemed to grow out of it eventually. Towards the end of me having to be there, some of the younger kids would get into big brawls, like some of the younger kids always had black eyes because of it. Apparently, that was normal in the eyes of the daycare lady, but me supposedly calling one of them a bad name when I wasn't even there that week was an affront to God. The rumor mills of the town were firing on all cylinders, trying to find dirt on people they didn't like. Unfortunately, my mother, a teacher at the high school, became a target towards the end of her time as a teacher there. Some of the more unhinged maniacs from her class would stalk her around town and started knifing her tires. One of them would take their car and rev it real loud in front of our house at like 9.30pm every night for a while. Some gossiping idiots got it in their head that my mother was either sleeping around or was divorced or whatever BS. It got to the point that one of the new younger cops pulled my mother over in our driveway to ask her about it, and if she was available. That guy was married at the time. I know, because not long after, I ended up knocking on his house, trying to sell him popcorn. OP, I don't know what little town you're from, but that diner you talked about was one of their main ingredients paint chips. Do you by chance have an uncle daddy? Judging by the comments down below, this last one could actually be kind of true. OP said, It's kind of hard to sort through it all and what is truly relevant to the sub because the whole town is essentially a big example of what happens when you combine in with fetal alcohol syndrome. Check out all three OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.